What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing you guys a sprite deck but not just any sprite deck. This sprite deck is the sauce and you guys are going to see what I mean by that in just a moment. However, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We do deck profiles, combo videos, pack openings, duels, all that good stuff, uploading five days a week here on Spanko. So make sure you guys subscribe and tune in for more. So with that being said, I'm gonna give you guys more information on everything when we get into the video. So I'm not gonna hold you guys for too much longer. Let's get it right into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get started in today's video, I do wanna just say something. And that is that this deck idea is actually not mine. I got this deck idea from Facebook, actually in the Sprite Duelist group. Shout out to the boy, Fernando. I actually messaged him because he posted this and I messaged I'm saying, hey, I really like this idea. I've been testing it myself. The concept just makes so much sense. And so I wanted to be like, could I use it in a YouTube video? He messaged me back saying, yeah, it's all cool, bro. And so here we are. This is not my idea, guys. But when I have been playing it, when I have been testing it, I want to say that this idea is great. And I really wanted to bring this idea to life, show other people around what this deck can really do and the concept behind this deck, which is amazing. So with that being said, let's get into the deck profile. We are starting off with three Sprite Blue. Of course, this is pretty standard. Now the sprite stuff you guys are going to see is pretty standard. You guys can see already that there's a lot of weird stuff going on, but it all fits together so well and it just makes a lot of sense and I'll get to it when we get to it. But of course we're playing the three sprite blue, the three sprite jet. We're playing two red as well as one carrot. I think these ratios are perfect, but we're also playing the one pixies. I think pixies is a great, great card and I think it makes a lot of sense for this card to be in the deck as well right now, especially because it's also it's a dark, which is very relevant in a deck like this. So I think this sprite monster package just makes more sense because as soon as you see any one of them really in your hand you're good to go so that's why you definitely really want to be playing these 10 and then we still haven't cut the swap frog package this package is way too strong having access totally awesome is just way too powerful so we are playing the three swap frog as well as the one ronin tonin we're not playing dupe frog i don't think you need dupe frog in this deck it's one of those things that dupe frog makes your deck a little bit more super polyable and you don't want to lose to cards like super poly so that's why we are playing the ronin tonin and no dupe frog this is the perfect ratios as well now the next cards are the ones i'm going to actually have to explain so these ones are pretty standard if you guys have ever seen any sprite deck profile these are pretty standard however where it changes up is the dark beckoning beast now there have been players that have been playing dark beckoning beast as an engine because it's a level two of course but this engine specifically in this kind of build just makes so much sense so dark beckoning beast essentially reads when this card is normal summoned you can add a uriah hamon or Raphael, or one card that specifically lists their names in its text so the really cool thing about this is that you can add the continuous spell card over here opening of the spirit gates now opening of the spirit gates has an effect that i'll get into in a second but this just being able to add the spirit gates is going to get you to two things one it's going to get you as an extender because opening can actually special summon a fiend with zero attack or defense from your graveyard so you're going to be able to summon back your dark beckoning beast but also the really cool thing about opening acting as an extender is that you're also going to be able to add a card when it's activated to your hand which means you're going to be able to add a second dark beckoning beast why that's really good is because you guys can see we are playing stuff like allure of darkness so you're just getting a lot of plus ones in this deck which is really makes it very very consistent now the other thing about the dark beckoning beast package is really good is we're playing the mask change as you guys can see this is kind of like a dark law turbo dark law in this format is obscenely powerful and so it just makes a lot of sense to be able to summon dark law something like mass change 2 where you can discard a card and target a face up monster you control that has a level and then you can special summon a mass hero from your extra deck with the same attribute but a higher level which means that you can potentially use the dark beckoning beast as dark law fodder that's the really cool thing about this card and then on top of that, there's even more. On top of that, this card has another really cool effect where during your main phase, you can normal summon a fiend monster with zero attack in addition to your normal summon or set. So the really cool thing is that for some reason, you open one dark beckoning beast and like four spells in your hand, you can go dark beckoning, add the spirit, spirit will add a second dark beckoning, and then you can normal summon the other dark beckoning because you get an extra normal summon, which means that you are then going to be able to go to gigantic sprite and get into your full combo. So dark beckoning beast, this end Engine is insanely powerful it provides you with so many different things that this deck otherwise didn't have like think about any sprite deck right now none of them have real draw power you now you can play a lure of darkness with all these dark monsters as well another really cool card here that we're playing is evil hero infernal prodigy evil hero infernal prodigy is just if you control no monsters you can special summon this card from your hand in attack position the only reason you do that is because it gets you a level two on board for any of your sprite monsters it's also a dark so the 
really cool thing about this is it's also mass changeable. If you have an extra copy in your hand that you're not going to need, you can always allure of darkness away. So now you're just getting more and more and more advantage with these cards. And that's just the best thing about this deck is the fact that you're playing a bunch of good dark engine monsters. They're all level two, so they work well with your sprite monsters. Speaking of blue and jet are also both dark. So potentially if you end your board on a blue or a jet, then you're going into dark law as well, which is really good. So that's the thing about this deck is just there's so many different options and there's so many different ways to achieve the essential goal of this deck, which is to end on like a toad, a gin buster, plus potentially a dark law or like a toad plus your elf plus a dark law, which is all you're going to need. And the really cool thing is if you put the dark law under the elf and I'm going to get into the extra deck in a little bit, but if you guys have played Sprite before, you guys know this, if you put the dark law under the elf, it actually can be targeted, which means you're safe from stuff like imperm on the dark law. And this card is just going to act like a crazy floodgate for you. So that's it for the dark package over here. The infernal party is a really good special summon. It's a really good extender for you. Just a level two that you could special summon right off the bat. It's a mass change to target this engine, this package over here, here is just so so powerful it works super well with the sprite cards and then we are moving on to the spell card so we're playing three sprite starter this is pretty standard as well as one smashers i mean these kind of things are very very standard it's just the stuff that's outside of the sprite that is kind of a little bit spicy and I, the really cool thing about this deck is honestly the more i played with it maybe it's not the best way to play sprite i can't even tell you what the best way is to play a sprite however it is like the sauciest way this is definitely the sauciest way to play this deck so yeah we're playing the three starter as well as the one smasher then of course like we said earlier we're playing the three allure of darkness you have your dark beckoning beasts as a target you have your evil hero infernal prodigy as a target you have your sprite blue and your sprite jet as targets even sprite pixies is a target if you need it to be so allure of darkness just lets you dig into your deck a little more and then we're playing the three dark ruler no more three super polymerization, three triple tactical talents. Honestly, these three spells are the most powerful spell cards in today's format. So for that reason, I think you have to be playing the three of them, whether going first or going second. That's a really cool thing about this deck is yes, you still want to go first. Yes, you can still combo going first. Of course, most of these things are one card combos. I mean, if you just opening Dark Beckoning Beast, you have a one card combo, right? If you open Swap Frog plus like a Sprite Blue, you have combo. Those kind of things are really, really relevant. So the really cool thing about this deck is you still want to go first. You can still combo going first. However, you play cards like Dark Ruler, you play cards like Super Poly, you play cards like TTT, which which means that if you are forced to go second, you're still in a really good position. TTT is also a really good card going first because a lot of people are going to be using their Ash or their Imperm potentially on your gigantic sprite. So if they do that, then your TTT is live and then you can either take a card out of their hand, you can draw two more cards. So this card is just really, really powerful. And the really cool thing about playing Allure in this deck is unlike other decks where you just kind of hope to draw the Dark Ruler or hope to draw into these, Allure Darkness gives you that ability to kind of just get more cards to your hand whenever you need, right? Like let's say you have a full combo, but you have the extra Infernal product in your hand you can just start your turn off with the lower darkness one allure darkness could bait out a hand trap which means the rest of your stuff is going through but two it also means that you can dig into your ttt or your super poly or your dark ruler which is also really powerful so that's why we're just playing the most powerful spell cards in today's format speaking of powerful spell cards we are playing mask change 2 this is a dark law turbo deck honestly i call this deck dark sprite that's probably the best way to describe it because the whole point of this deck is playing dark monsters and abusing their abilities mask change 2 is really good again it lets you dodge a lot of hand traps which is really nice all you have to do is discard a card but like i said if you start your turn off with dark beckoning beast you search the spirit gates spirit gates is going to get you another dark beckoning beast which automatically means you have something for allure or you have something to discard for mass change 2 if you need right so mass change 2 is really really powerful in this deck of course what happens is usually you're going to be going through your full combo and you're going to want to set your mass change 2 because once you use gigantic sprite you actually can't special summon anything that's higher than a level 2 so for that reason you're going to be ending your turn on like let's say an elf plus a toad plus a dark monster and then you're going to set your mass change 2 so as soon as your opponent's turn starts you can go mass change 2 into dark law so that's why mass change 2 is really really powerful as well as just being able to dodge hand traps like I said is very good and then we're playing the one opening of the spirit gates of course this is the card that you get to your bar dark beckoning beast so this card is really really powerful and truthfully i do want to say this as well opening is one of those cards where if you actually open this in your hand it's not that bad because just on activation you're going to get to search your dark beckoning beast which is really powerful so obviously you'd rather open the dark beckoning to search this then search another one but i mean worst case scenario you open this card you just start off by activating it one again like i said it could be hand trap bait but you're also going to be able to get to your dark beckoning beast which is really good so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck i know it kind of went in depth but i think it makes a little bit more sense to go in depth 
because there's so much synergies with these cards and the reason they work so well is because unlike other sprite decks this deck actually lets you go through your deck extremely quickly you already have blue to search a monster jet to search a spell so these are getting searches for you the swap package is dumping cards for you these cards are adding cards to your hand potential allure of darkness drawing cards so you're just going to be able to get so many cards in your hand you're always going to have the advantage so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck moving on to the extra deck though here we are playing two gigantic sprite i mean the extra deck is kind of standard i won't lie it's stuff that's pretty much just seen in every sprite deck so we're playing the two sprite the one toad the one gin buster gin buster is really good in this deck i really like this card and then we're playing the one centuria one downard as well as one zeus i don't think i changed these up maybe the downard and i'll explain that in a little bit because you guys can see the mud dragon here but uh yeah i'm playing this package here the zeus package is way too powerful then we're playing two sprite elf one dark we're playing one Nightmare Phoenix just to deal with any pesky back row and one Axis Code Talker. Axis Code is really easy to make in this deck, so you do want to be playing the one Axis Code Talker. Then, of course, we're playing the one Dark Law, the Garura, as well as the Starving Venom because we are playing the Super Polymerization. And Super Poly going first is insanely powerful because you can full combo your opponent, set a Super Poly. So even if they're trying to break your board, you can just use the Super Poly and then get into your Garura or your Starving Venom, right? So the extra deck is very standard. It's not something that I have to talk about too long. However, I will say this. I feel like this card should be included in the extra deck somewhere. Now, Fernando's deck is exactly this, okay? What I'm showing you guys right here is the deck that I got from Fernando. However, I will say that I still do personally believe a Mud Dragon should be in everyone's extra deck when you're playing Super Poly because this card is just insanely powerful, breaks so many boards. So for that reason, the only two like cuttable cards I would say is maybe Downward Magician to cut this, or you can cut the Phoenix. Phoenix is a really good card, of course, because it's also a Link 2 that you can end up using for your Gigantic or whatnot. But I think you can maybe cut the Phoenix as well. You could also cut the Axis Code. I mean, Axis Code is a really good OTK finisher card, so maybe you guys keep this. But uh, yeah, so it, I think it's going to have to be either the Phoenix or the Downward Magician that's going to get cut for the Mud Dragon, because I just think Mud Dragon is just way too powerful. However, like Garur is just way too good right now anyways. So it's starving venom so for that reason maybe you don't need the mud dragon i just think mud dragon is good in a lot of situations take what i said with a grain of salt i think this deck is so so powerful shout out fernando i don't know if he came up with this he's the one that posted about it and he's the one that said i've been playing this deck and this is how i really like it this is the best version that he's played with so shout out fernando thank you for the user letting me use this deck profile thank you for letting the spanko squad see it i think this deck is very very powerful try it out for yourselves because i'm telling you this deck is the sauce that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy shout out fernando for letting me use this deck profile for the channel i think this deck is just super super saucy the fact that you can play evil heroes and dark law in sprite is just amazing and the synergy with everything is just so so good so the fact that this deck can bring all of these really cool engines and all these really cool ideas together is just insanely entertaining to me like i said in the video though i don't know if this is the best way to play sprite but i also don't know if there's any best way to play sprite at this point maybe the brave package maybe the tier sprite stuff i don't know but i think this deck is super saucy and you guys should try it out yourselves make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already to stay up to date with all this spanko content we upload five days a week here on the channel thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you Seven thousand subscribers soon i know we can make it happen with that spanko sign it out peace